I, I found this is the easiest way to get a nice flush edge with journal papers. Sometimes the guillotine will uh, choke on a lot of papers at once. The little tiny cutters, the you know, with using the fishing line or whatever it is, they just can't handle it. It's just too much for them. Okay, got that. I'm gonna take the whole thing. Paper clipping this together would be the wiser move, but I don't have one near me. Okay, so here we go. And go a little bit left of the line. How's that for a not straight line? Okay, got that? Yeah, are you seeing? Closer? Nah, you don't need to see that close. <laughs> okay, I'm just cutting. Same thing. Just keep an eye on this. You don't want to lose a thumb. I want all thumbs to remain attached so that you can craft for days to come. That's right. Thumbs are handy, being opposable and all. They uh, have many uses. <laughs> and uh, okay, there we go. Did I cut that straight? I hope so. So now you want to grab a cover. Just make sure it fits. Does everything stay inside? Yes, actually does pretty well. Very happy about that. And we're going to use this to mark where to cut our holes. We're going to go right through here with our pencil and make a little mark. Mark, and that's what we're going to shoot for when we punch our holes in this. All right, where's my big bite? Come here, big bite. I got a job for you. I got a job for you. Oh, there we dropped something else. Okay. Um, why is my desk so full of stuff? Oop, there goes more stuff. Okay. I swear, I, I swear I just cleaned it off. I swear. Okay. There we are. Now I'm just shooting for those, those holes. Okay. Bring this a little closer. I know it's hard to see on the angle because I got to push down. But I look from the side. Somebody said, how do you see where you're pushing? I, I My head is off to the side here, looking sideways at where the little... Uh, pl thing comes down and so I can see it's right on the dot I need. That's how I know where to push. It's probably a two-hand squeeze. It's a lot of paper. Okay. And I did it and it went through and life is good. Yeah, it's a really awesome cutter. Um, you could probably do this with an awl and a hammer as well. Just a little more fussy. Um, but if you're going to do a lot of these, this gizmo is the way to go. Okay, there we go. Got our holes. All right, let me back up. And life's looking good. Okay, so this is going to all go together very nicely, but I think I'm going to do some, if you want to hang out, I'm just going to play with the covers and uh, maybe spruce them up a little bit. Huh, I might lost something on the end of there. A little dry looking there. <laughs> just down to the Velcro. Okay, this is the vintage photo. This is the green one. You don't use the green one with the vintage photo. Let see, where is it? Where is it? Here it is, here, right here. Got it. This, I, I put the little uh, thread on there to make sure I have the right one. Um, and I often get them wrong. So um, I'm just going to ink up a little bit. Let's see how this is grabbing a little bit. It's just, uh, I'm going for the rusty, uh, rustic grungy look. Yes, those who don't like that look, look away. Look away. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna do more than just that. So don't don't you don't you worry. There's more coming. No idea what it's gonna be at the moment, but it's more coming. And I think I'm going to. I know this has some traction on it, so I'm just gonna lightly do a little bit of this around the edges. I'm gonna hew it because I know it's gonna grab a little bit with the um, the gesso that's on there. And you could like go through a little in the middle if you want here and there. But that's just going to knock it back a little bit. I still have some shine on there. And if I spray it with a matte thing, it will help knock down the shine more. The matte sealant spray too. So that's going to help. Um, now here, we're going to do some more, more of this. Yeah. Oh, look, I got some red there. That happens. It's okay. It's okay. See, sometimes you can try and cover it, which is a way out of that. See, I've got a little bit of red overplay there, a little bit of red overplay there. Or you can just decide to incorporate it into your design, which I tend to like to do that one because why fight it? Here's a little red overplay too. And um, sometimes you'll find out, hey, it actually worked out to my benefit. So let me just finish inking this. What do they say? Your, uh, 
your best day is actually your 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 worst day could actually be your best day but you just don't know it yet because things haven't evolved enough yet in life so sometimes you gotta look at it like that just uh it could be the best things in sliced bread but you just can't tell yet because you're you're thinking it's awful but it's not awful it's it's just a new way of uh designing oh, okay so now with this guy what i could do is i could come along and just enhance like like carry the red over so it looks like it was part of my plan yeah okay now that's masking some of the stuff that happened on the corners but since i have like an oddball here and there maybe I, i'm gonna just put some occasional little red marks here and there across the picture i've got nothing on here <laughs> where's my red <laughs> there it is Okay, now it's going to be pretty strong once I go back in here, but uh, uh, this is barn door again, in case you forgot, barn door. All right, yeah, we are. Okay, just going to do a little bit more there, here, and maybe just a little here and there around. Okay, so now everything's looking a little more cohesive. I might come in with a little more brown and just knock it back a bit. Okay. Yeah, you see that? Okay, just knocking everything back, blending it together, not fighting it, just going with it, making it part of the entire grand plan. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. Yep. Totally planned, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> You just never know sometimes you just never know okay back up i always got to make sure i hit the right button please Oop, you hear that something else fell off the thing okay do you want a little more brown on here maybe huh okay all right um okay so i think that is nice and aged this one what do we got okay you are the back so maybe i'm going to put a little bit of red on you because we want to keep you unified with the entire little berry theme on the front picture. So we're doing like a red and yellow sort of combination. There's a weird color combination I never, never use. But, um, you know, I'm being explorative. I'm going into the world of colors that I don't use that often and just seeing what happens. And that's kind of fun. You know, we have to allow ourselves some playtime sometime to try new things. We always work with the same colors, you know. Hey, get out there and try some different colors every once in a while. Yeah, I'm hewing now, hewing, like softening the border edges a little bit. Making it look a little bit like the other guy and then coming in with a brown and maybe doing the corners a little browner with what is left over on my little dauber. Okay, okay, there we go. Now we're talking. All right, so you can see. Boop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I think I'm liking that. Okay, now for the big finale. Boop. Uh, I'm going to come in with some gilding paste, gold gilding paste. If you happen to have some of that, that's awesome. There are different kinds out there. Um, I'm having a little trouble finding this exact brand anymore. I think they stopped making it. but um, And you can use anything. You probably should have used copper with this one, but I have got gold now. Okay, so this is also going to go on my edges. It, gold gilding paste or gilding wax is like a, a colorant and a sealant. It's a heavy pigment mixed with wax or other magnificent, I don't knows. And, uh, but you, they use it on furniture a lot. And uh, it gives a nice uh, pop of uh, Baroque bling, I would say. Um, anybody know when the Baroque period was? When was that? It was probably before the 1800s, I would imagine. Probably like 15 or 1600s or something like that. I don't know, I'm guessing, I'm thinking. Back to my art appreciation class in community college. What was it? What was it? Ugh. I knew it for the test, then it was gone. Yeah, <laughs> that happens, right? Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, all right. And what you can do, let's say you're, um... let me show you. Okay, see how I used kind of a coppery, colored thing but when I go over it with the gold gilding paste all of a sudden voila, it's gold yeah so you can kind of make everything look uniform that way by uh, using the gilding pastes gilding waxes 
Um, yeah. Okay, I do have some of those in my store if you're interested. Or if you can't find them, sometimes they're a little tricky to find online. But uh, they are out there. They are out there. Right. Let's see, one little you know, cobbling there, back in line. <laughs> okay, there. all right. Okay, good, good. Okay, that's one. And this guy, I, uh, I gotta do something with that shine. Okay, let's just go around with you. Oh, that looks kind of cool, huh? Yeah, okay, now I'm changing those to gold because it's on my finger. And this stuff will dry, permanent. And um, it does seal, so that is, gives you the double, the double uh, way of doing that. You could also use acrylic paint. You could use, um, you know, pastels. You could use um, other things to color around the edge. You could use markers, things like that. Um, so just remember, you got a lot of things to play with. You could use more inks and dyes. You could use some a washi tape if you really glue it down with some good uh, glue so it doesn't move. That would also work to seal your edges. Now remember your book, your book, your old book cover is actually sealed. The edges are sealed on it, so you don't have to do that. That's just more of a decorative choice. Okay. All right. Now what are we gonna do? All right, like, oh, you guys, you're like, think, is she ever going to stop this video? It's going on forever. Well, I'm just, um, no, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm going on forever, apparently. Yeah, it's going to be as many, as many uh, pieces as it takes. There. <laughs> okay, let's see. So let's see how we can knock that down a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to try this. I have clear textured gesso. Try that. Let me sand a little bit more. Let's see if I could just sand the uh, shine off. That'd be the easiest thing. Yeah. Uh, uh. Mm, of course, I'm sanding off all my gesso. That's okay. Mm. Let me go to the rough side. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. And if I have to put on all my ink again, that's fine. I'm getting there? Yeah, yeah, I think it is coming off. Okay, okay. Okay, what do we got? Yeah, a little better, right? We got a little, a little shine there. Eh? Not bad, though. Maybe I need a tougher sanding block. Whoops, oh man, there's dust everywhere. This is a very dusty process. <laughs> Just so you know, if you're going to do this inside, you may want to do this outside. Oh boy, or get that mask, like I said. This is a very well-sealed Edith Holden book, apparently. Okay, that is less shiny than it was before. Yeah, I see a little shine on the edge here. Oh, there's probably no grit left there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to buy a new sanding block. That's what it is. I just need one with more grit on it. Okay. Yeah, better, better. Okay. Well, huh? Huh? Go on the corners. Okay. Yeah. There. I pretty much took took everything, all my uh, gesso off, but I think it came out better. So maybe sometimes just use a sanding block. Feels very smooth, very papery, very cool. But is that a little bit off? Okay. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Okay, let me, uh, do I want to come in again with the brown? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just around the edges. It's going to grab a little better because now it's got a bit of a rougher surface. Just a little bit. Just, not too much. Not too much. Okay. There. I think I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with the amount of shine it has on it. I could go ahead and cover it with a clear gesso um, mix. Um, but no, I think I'm just going to leave it. It feels really nice in the hand. That's one of the things I like to, you know, it's like the hand test. I'm very tactile and if it feels good in the hand, then, th then that's good. Because that makes somebody want to pick it up and hold it and keep it in their lap. Um, let's see. Did I rub off the gold? I think I did. Let me go back in here and just re-gold up the edges a little bit. All right. I just don't want to let you guys go today. I'm just going to hang on to you all day. Yeah, all day. <laughs> 
I'm just being selfish. I just want you, I just want to hang out with you all day. <laughs> I got to go grocery shopping. I got, I got stuff to do. I got other work and this and that. Uh, but this is a fun part. And um, so thanks for hanging out with me. This has been really cool. So let's put our book together and um, see how it goes. I'll clean the finger off. Okay, let's go so we can, I knew I had a wet one. Here it is. Da 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 The big finale. Okay, let's get our papers. Got to get the rings. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Are, are you still here with me? I hope so. Okay, um, I got I grabbed these rings and let me measure. I think they are one and a quarter inch rings. Um, and you can use any size rings, but I don't think I really need big ones for this because I don't want the thing to be too clunky. A weird bird squeak over there. Okay, that's all right. All right, so I'm going to align. Put these together. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that so cool? That's so cool. Okay, this is the inside. I didn't ink this. Oh, that's what, my brown. Sorry, not finished yet. Not finished. This hewing. Where's the red? Here you are. Just a little reddish hue. I didn't over red on the side too much, so I just need like a a soft halo hewing. There we go. And we're good. Okay, so coming through the back. Can you see? Let me close up on you so you can see. Coming through the, open the ring, come through the back. And I know nothing about rings because I think this is literally one of the first things I've made with rings. Maybe the second. <laughs> Not a big ring person thing, but um, um, just put that there. And then take this one, come through the back, and then... Uh, but for this particular purpose, the, I think the ring makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I do. Okay, and I'm through. Now let's let's thread this one through. See, that's not too hard to do. Now let's put on the cover. Whoop! Okay, we came out. Of course, of course we came out. Okay, here we go. We're back in. Okay, it's not that hard to get back in. Oh, where's the other part of my ring? There it is. Okay, stay still, Sally. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna put on the cover. This should go smoothly, right? Don't say that, Pam. Have you not learned anything? Okay, now we'll get these together. Sometimes they go together easy. Sometimes you gotta fight with them a little. Oh, they were they were very friendly. Ta-da! Let me back up. Do 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 do. We now have our book. I guess you could orient this the other way so that when you open the book, you actually see it in the right way. That might be smarter. Um, you got your pages. They all flip easily. And then you got your back cover, which I put on, on an angle. <laughs> it works very well. It's very strong, very sturdy. And like I said, you could come along and spray it with a sealant at the end, um, light back and forth strokes, uh, back and forth strokes, let it air dry, and another coat of light back and forth strokes. And I would do that outside to your back and your front cover. Um, and then where's the other one? Where's the other one? Come on, come on, Sally. We're in the home stretch. All right, here's the other one. So there, there you go, folks. I hope you had fun making these legal pad notebook ring bound thingamajigs. And um, I'm so happy to, to hang out with you guys today. So really, you made my day. Thank you so much for all your encouragement and all your support because uh, uh, together we're making this happen. I don't know. I don't know. It's just amazing. It's so amazing. So I'm forever humbled, forever grateful for all your time, energy, effort, and presence. And thank you. So make sure you join the 50,000 subscriber giveaway contest if you are interested. Um, I am going to um, uh, make one of these the prize. I guess I'm going to make this one the surprise, the Beatrix Potter. And um, this will be the prize. So uh, um, make sure you put down what uh, start, when did, like, how did your paper passion start is the question. So put your answer in the comments and then also... Um, Click the like button, subscribe. Oh yeah, so, 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 subscribe, that's what I forgot to say. <clears throat> like, subscribe, and comment. And then on September 15th, which is the, a good date I can remember, we'll do the drawing and it'll be a live drawing. So watch for that. Take care, folks. If you're looking for any links to um, my other videos, my Etsy shop, my Amazon store, um, my mo free monthly email newsletter, it's all down below in the description boxes along with my social media links. Take care, everybody. Have fun. Remember that fun can be simple and go out there and create with reckless abandon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next time.